Hey everybody, it's Miss Maria. And this morning we're going to learn how to create this really super cool watercolor sunset. I'll make sure you guys know how to make your watercolors blend into one another. I'll make sure you know how to get these beautiful mountains and how to make these awesome saguaro cactuses. And we're gonna do all this for our very first project. You can watch this video over and over and over and over again. Take as much time as you need. And when you're all done, I want you to send it back to school so I can make a special pamphlet for your original works. You guys remember that original works is the project that goes home and you can order t-shirts and cups and, and magnets and you can get all sorts of presents for the holidays, birthday presents or think in advance for Mother's Day or whatever you'd like to do. You can even get yourself your own sketchbook. It's a really cool program and all the funds raised for the original works goes right to the art program so we can get more supplies, we can get more watercolors and more brushes and we can use clay. So it's a really, really fun thing to do. I'm gonna teach all first, second and third graders how to make a watercolor Arizona sunset and i um, really super excited to, to do this with you. So the very first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna set up your space, right? You can see that I have a nice clean space in front of me. I've got my paper here set up. I've got my watercolor. I've got a water cup and a big brush. Very, 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 very first thing that you're going to want to do is write your name on the back of your paper. It's super duper important. So I'm going to write Miss Maria. And I want you to write your teacher's name. So if you're in Miss Samia's class, you're going to write Samia on the back. S-A-M-I-A -A or J-E-3. If you're in Miss Turner's class, you can write Turner or JE2. And if you're in Miss Renee's class, if you're in Miss Montez's class, you can write Montez or you can write JE1. Once you get your name on the back of your paper with a pencil, you're gonna lay your paper down. And the very first thing that we're gonna do, step number one, is we are gonna get our watercolors ready. All right, boys and girls, are you ready for step number one? Getting our watercolors ready. We're about to paint the desert sunset. And here's what you need to do. I'm gonna flip this screen around so that you can see exactly my setup and exactly what you need to have set up at your house too in order to make this sunset. Here we go. All right, everybody's here. We are going to get our watercolors ready. And the really cool and special thing about watercolor paint is that it uses a very, very readily available material. Everybody has access to this. Water. Mmm, don't drink this though, okay? We need to use some water to get our watercolors ready. And what we are going to do is we're gonna take a little drink of water and give it to our blue. Go back in and get a drink of water and give it to our yellow. And then we'll get a drink of water and we're gonna give it to our red. And who remembers what blue, yellow, and red are? They are a certain type of color that we rely on. If you think back to the color wheel, you will remember that blue, yellow, and red are primary colors. And when you mix primary colors together, you're gonna to get something called a secondary color. And we are going to do that today with our project in making our sunset. The very first thing that we're going to learn how to do is how to make a watercolor wash. All right, boys and girls, everybody's ready. The very first thing that you're going to do is get your watercolor writer ready by putting in a little bit of water to the blue, to the yellow, and to the red. And I want you to make sure that you're adding just a little bit of water to these colors. It's important that we put water in because they will not work without a drink of water. They're thirsty. We need to help them out. Okay. 
when you make a watercolor wash, what you're basically doing is you're allowing your watercolor to blend almost on its own, and that's gonna give you some really neat effects. You're gonna get some neat color blending. And if you're patient and you let the watercolor do its thing, you'll get some really soft blends. In order to do a watercolor wash, what I'd like you to do is just take some regular plain water and I'd like you to put some water, only water on your paper. So you're just taking the water and you're preparing your paper by making it pretty wet at the top. It's hard to see this on camera, but if you look really close, I'm just putting water on my paper, side to side. And I am bringing this water down about halfway so that my paper is ready. Now I'm ready for my first color. I'm gonna take my brush, I'm going to put it in my blue, and you notice how wet it is? That's really truly what you need. With a watercolor wash, you're gonna work your way from one side to the other, and you're gonna gently let the paint flow onto your paper. Now you'll notice that it's already starting to do some pretty magical things. It's already starting to be pulled down to our other space, and that's because of the water we put on. We're ready for our next color. If you're not done, you can pause this video and then come back to it when you're ready for your next color. You can take your red, that's gonna be next. Now, if you think back to the color wheel and the practice that we had with primary colors, what's gonna happen when I start to mix red with blue? Well, if you said you're gonna get some purples, you are correct. Blue and red are gonna mix together and you're gonna get purples in here. So when you do your wash, you're gonna go side to side and lay your color down nice and gentle. If you feel like you need to get more red on your brush, that's absolutely okay. You notice that I'm working my way down the painting. I'm really not going back into the other areas. We're gonna trust that the watercolor is wet enough to do its thing. Okay, I'm gonna wash my brush. My water's getting pretty gross. You can rinse your water if you need to, but look, my brush is fine. So you have to make that decision on your own. If you need to pause this video before you get to the last color, that's absolutely okay. We are on to our last color now. I'm gonna take some water. I'm gonna put it right where my next color is gonna to be to make sure it's nice and wet, because after all, we're doing a wash. I'm gonna go into my last color, which is yellow. Oh, look how nice and loose that watercolor is. This is what we need for our wash. And we're going right along the border. Now, think to our color wheel again. What is gonna happen when you mix yellow and red? you should see some oranges. And slide the side to side. If you feel like your yellow is not wet enough, you can always get some nice clean water. You can add some water down below and that will help your watercolor glide along for your sky. I want you to take this yellow not all the way down to the bottom, that's not necessary. But I want you to bring it pretty low. 
okay? I'm gonna cake my brush into my water cup. I'm gonna set my brush on my paper towel and I'm good to go. You notice that I have a big section down here at the very bottom where it's white. It's totally okay to leave your paper like this. Now, boys and girls, let me tell you something really, really important about this right now. This paper is very, very wet. If I were to pick this paper up and move it, I would get dripping watercolor everywhere. And that's gonna be something that's gonna cause a big mess and we wanna avoid that. So let this paper dry where it is or ask one of your parents or grandparents for help in keeping it in a safe place until it's um, all the way dry. And when it's dry, we will be ready for step two.